the Oregon Senate Judiciary Committee heard testimony on the Celilo bills, SCR 10, mourning the loss of Celilo Falls, and SGM 7 regarding Celilo Village housing on March 8, 2007. Welcome everyone. Call the Senate uh, Judiciary to, uh, to order in subcommittee. Uh, for those of you uh, who are, are new to the building, uh, we've, we've got a lot of activity going on in the Capitol today. Some very serious negotiations are going on which are affecting some members of this committee. So I don't want to hold up progress because we have to return to the floor at 2.30. And so I want to make sure that the people who have come here, especially from a long distance, uh, get a chance to participate um, in the next hour. And because of the tight, tight time schedule, if everyone who's speaking uh, can be very, very brief. Again, this is an unusual day. Usually we have uh, two hours or so for our meeting, and today we only have uh, about 50 minutes. So my, my apologies. We want to make sure everybody gets heard. So I will start off uh, today and, and with a um, opening a public hearing on SJM 7 and SCR 10. And I will uh, tell you in advance that when we get a third member of the committee on board, we will recess this hearing uh, for a very short time to pass a bill out from our agenda today. And then we will come back to the hearing. So it won't be much of a disruption. So we have counsel here uh, somewhere on this uh, bill. They went to find him. And they went to find him. So I don't think we need counsel because we have Senator Avail Gordley um, here to uh, start off this discussion. been replaced by Senator Gordley. I hope you're a good sport. I probably did a lot better job. Than <laughs> Normally right council does a summary, but we will rely on your good services unless Senator Gordley, you would like him to proceed with the summary. I would like, uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, good afternoon for the record. Uh, Avell Gordley representing Senate District 23 in Multnomah County. And it's an honor and a pleasure to be here this afternoon for this purpose. Thank you. Uh, Council, uh, you could summarize the bills. Then. Madam Chair, members of the committee, uh, SCR 10 comes here from Senator Gordley. It mourns the flooding of Cecilio Falls in 1957 caused by the damming of the Columbia River at the Dells. It's Celilo Falls. Celilo, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Betraying my... And then uh, SGM 7 is also here on the agenda. We're, right. we're hearing them both. Madam Chair, members of the committee, SJM 7, Kemsey from Senator Gordley, memorializes Congress for the purpose of urging Congress to continue funding for the Silo Village, Silo Village Housing Restoration Projects. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it is kind of a hard word. So we'll take your testimony, Senator Gordley, and then we will recess the hearing to work our bill, and then we will return to the hearing. Okay. Senator Abel Gordley, and Lewis Pitt, Jr. of the Confederated Tribes of Warm Springs were the first to speak to the Judiciary Committee. Welcome. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and again, uh, it's an honor, a deep honor, to uh, be with you this afternoon and to have uh, seated beside me um, Mr. Louis Pitt uh, of the Warm Springs uh, Tribe. And he will speak. Uh, uh, after I finish my brief remarks. I want to ask members of the committee to, as, as, you, as the story unfolds this afternoon, I hope that you will uh, gaze upon the, the two photos that we have uh, here in the room as the story unfolds, as the power of the story unfolds, as you hear the voices of those who've come to represent the story uh, again, that you will uh, look at these pictures and uh, reflect on the history that we're about to share with you. SCR 10 mourns the flooding of Celilo Falls in 1957 and its loss to the tribal people of Oregon. 
the loss to the tribal people of Oregon. The destruction of Celilo Falls was one of the great natural, cultural, and religious wonders of the world. Ended a way of life that had endured and prospered for thousands of years, thousands of years. The destruction of Celilo Falls also destroyed the homes of the Wyam people who had inhabited the site for thousands of years, creating great hardship and great injustice. And the hardship and the injustice uh, continues to this day. SJM 7 urges Congress to continue to fund housing restoration to benefit the YM people at Celilo Village until completion. In brief, Madam Chair, uh, that is what the two uh, measures accomplish, and there are powerful voices beside me and behind me to carry forward the rest of the story. Thank you very much, Senator Gordley. Mr. Pitts. Uh, Yellen Schwick to Louis Pitt, Jr. I'm a Director of Government Affairs and Planning for the Confederated Tribes of Warm Springs. My mom was an uh, enrolled uh, Warm Springer. My dad uh, enrolled Yakima. So um, uh, again, uh, definitely from the river. In recent times, we were moved from the river, our home, to the uh, reservations that we have, I think a number of us uh, went to Warm Springs and some went to Yakima, some went to Nespers and Umatilla. We're here. Um, Sweet Sorrow, it might be called, is um, we want to move on. We have to move on as a people, as Americans. Celilo Falls was a wonderful place, still is, has a village there. We've got some Celilo village residents here that can talk to the life of uh, Celilo. And I, as a government person, have committed, I think, uh, to carry the message on uh, from our tribe that we will work to coordinate, I think, ongoing efforts to help Celilo uh, the people be what it should be for the village and for those of us that uh, still use treaty rights and use that as an area to uh, house our treaty rights as we go fishing on the river. We still have our off-reservation rights and the uh, Wyampum people, the Wyampums, um, as a people of the river have uh, held the line down there for uh, a long time and have been to be honestly said, neglected by a number of governments. And so we are back and we need the funding and we put that in, a, I think, a, a note to Congress to continue urging funding this. And uh, also we're going to need the services of the state and the county for the ongoing services of that community and, and, and what uh, we can't provide uh, from our various reservations and uh, that uh, federal people just aren't good at too. So. Again, we'll need some of your leadership down the road to help uh, provide those services. And again, I'm uh, not going to dwell on the tremendous uh, attack on our way of life that the falls had uh, done to my dad's, my mom's way of life. And I was just a youngster at the time. And wonderful, beautiful, unique place, one of a kind, as I understand, in, in our lives. And so uh, thank you. Um, uh, Judiciary Committee for your, your ear and time. And again, if uh, please uh, uh, listen to some of our uh, Celilo village residents that can put it so much, uh, uh, I think, more earnestly than I can because they lived there and loved the land and were lived through the change. Thank you. And thank you for coming, uh, Mr. Pitt. We really appreciate you making the trip to oh, and testify. Much thanks to yeah. Senator Gordley for uh, picking this up and carrying it, uh, carrying it. such a wonderful message as she's always done, I think, for us. So well, she thank always you, has, Senator. and I can assure you her heart is in this one. Um, are there questions from the committee? Uh, thank you very much. At this time, I will recess uh, the hearing on these two bills, and I will open a work session on Senate Bill 112, and this should go very quickly. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. <clears throat> Senate Bill 112, uh, was, there was a public hearing on this bill in February 5th, 
the bill allows the state or a defendant in a criminal case to After a brief recess, the Oregon Senate Judiciary Committee heard testimony from Salilo, the oldest continuously inhabited settlement in North America, dating back more than 12,000 years. Okay, now we will reopen the hearing on uh, SJM 7 and SCR 10. And I will tell the people in the audience it is uh, my wish, and I think the wish of others on this committee, to actually vote on this bill today. Uh, so it's really uh, depending on how quickly we can get through this. If we can get through this while we still have at least three members of the committee here, we can vote on these bills today. And if it takes past about 225 or 230, then we'll have to have the vote another day. But uh, the chair is very fond of these bills and uh, is looking forward to hearing from you. So we will start with, um, let's see what we have here. We have, uh, let's see, right, we'll start with the SCR 10 uh, list. Emily uh, Wahiniha. Wahenica. And would Norma Miller Heath like to come up with her? Okay, speak. Go ahead, Emily. Well, my name is Emily Wahenica. My Indian name is. Kasinwe, and I'll have Norma Heath Buttons, or Norma Buttons Heath, read the statements for Thank you for very me. much. Thank you. Good afternoon. It's an honor and pleasure to be here today. My name is Norma Miller Heath, Warm Springs. Um, Good afternoon, Chair Burdick and members of the Judiciary Committee. A statement for, for Emily Wahinica. We are here today to testify in favor of Senate Concurrent Resolution 10 to mourn the great loss of Celilo <coughs> Falls 50 years ago. Part of Emily's testimony will be in Ichishkin, the language of the Warm Springs people. The Creator gave us Celilo Falls, Wanapam, in our language as a great gathering place to fish for salmon. For many thousands of years, people came to the sacred place from all over the Northwest to fish, trade, and celebrate. My grandfathers, my father, brothers, and nephews all fished there. My grandmothers, my mother, my sisters, and me and my nieces all dried and cooked the great salmon. The falls were so huge, the water so strong, that as you approached, you felt the falls before you heard it. I was blessed to first feel and see Wyampum in the 1920s. No one could see then that our people would learn how to silence Wyampum of Nichiwana, the Great Falls of the Columbia. No one could believe that anyone would think they could or should undo the wonder of the Creator. We were stunned in 1957 when the Dalles Dam backed up the water and buried Wyampum. Suddenly there was silence where the water had thundered for so many of our ancestors' lifetimes. Our hearts are still broken for one of them as our beating heart, our source of food, our place of celebration. I see that the resol resolution is to be given to the Confederate tribes of Umatilla, the Confederate tribes of Warm Springs, and the Nespers tribe. I ask the Senate to also give it to the Wyom Board as they represent the people of Celilo Village and the Confederated Tribes and Bands of the Yakima Nation. My thanks to Senator Gordley for introducing Senate Concurrent Resolution 10 and to Senate President Courtney and for you for holding the hearing quickly and reminding all of the people in Oregon of our loss. It is a loss beyond words. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Are there questions from the committee? Thank you very much. Chair, I believe Mrs. Wahenica just wanted to say a few words. Okay, please. Uh, in memory of a uh, YM in Shililo, um I remember back to mid-20s 
of how Celilo was. All the fishing sites by families or individuals. Some of the scaffolds had Indian names. In the the ones the one that I remember, his name was Tom Nye. Tiawit was his Indian name. He had five scaffolds, but he was too old to fish, so he let people fish there, but he they would let him have maybe one or two salmon. And the rest was <coughs> distributed among those that could not fish, or the widows that were there. They hired out, a lot, a lot of the women would hire out to pack the salmon for the men so that they could earn their salmon to dry or salt. These were days that nothing was modern. It was like a stone age. I remember going to the big island with my mother. Uh, she had an aunt there and asked her to come and help her cut salmon and pack salmon. I was I must have been about six years old, but I remember going across on a canoe. There was a three fire lodge. This was the Moses clan from Mary Hill, Washington. That's where my Indian name came from, because my grandfather was from Mary Hill, and my grandmother was from Tuxbush, that's John Day. So anyway, the clan, they had five scaffolds. And Stahomsh was the name of their scaffolds. And that's the name that Joe Moses has today. He's one of our chiefs in the Confederate tribes of Warm Springs. And the drying sheds were always on the east end of the building, the shed. There was two other families the McKinley family, and there's just one daughter living from that family. They put up the lodges there sometimes in May or early part of June after the spring runoff. Of course, during the spring, there were a lot of seals that would come up and settle in those islands. But uh, the fishing, the peak season, they, they came from all over the Northwest to fish. And off season, that's when we would all be busy cutting salmon for drying. There was no refrigerators, no freezers, so the salmon, a lot, of, a lot of it was in 25 gallon barrels to salt, same way with the eels. And the pounded salmon was put into cedar baskets to preserve the, the salmon. And a lot, of, a lot of the people that could not come to Celilo, they were farmers or they were working out in the fields. They would can their fruit. The farmers would bring in their flour to trade for salmon. All fall, I remember my grandfather, my uncle, hauling, hauling flour, like 15 sacks, to trade for the salmon. They had to bring their flour their wheat to Maupin flour mill. And from there, they would go home with flour. Thank you. This for is how it was during, during the summer months. Every year, every summer. Thank you for that um, eyewitness uh, testimony. That is very, uh, very compelling. Thank you mm -hmm. for coming. Are there questions from the committee? And, and during those times, 
the merchants in the Dells would, enough, would not allow our people to enter their department stores. I remember a couple that went in, and the manager came, out, 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 you can't come in. I hope, I hope we've gone beyond that uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> now. So I appreciate you coming. Senator Walker, did you want to say something? I just want to thank them for their testimony. And um, I did read the Oregonian. Um, they did a nice story on the falls and the demise of your community. And I really enjoyed reading the history and appreciate getting this firsthand today. Thank you. Thank you. We have um, our next three witnesses have also come from a, a great distance uh, to be here. Lana Jack, Ed. Ed, Ed, no, and, <laughs> and Linda George Minas. I'm not very good at reading handwriting, so my apologies. Thank you. Thank you. floor at 2 30 so I know. welcome Thank and you. again I want to remind you that if we're going to vote on this yeah. bill today we yeah. need to um, okay thank you thank you at this time I'd just like to thank each and every one of you for your time and your compassion mm -hmm. to the situation to this story as like they said in the beginning as it is um, unfolds. Could, could you give us um, your name for the record? My name is Lana Jack. Mm -hmm. I grew up at Salalo. I am currently a homeowner and landowner in this relocation plan that we are currently in with the Army Corps of Engineers at Salalo at present. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Who would like to talk next? <clears throat> Hello, my name is Linda George Mianis. I'm the great granddaughter of Chief Tommy Thompson and <clears throat> Flora. And I, too, am a descendant of Celilo. Um, um, I'm Celilo Wyam, Warm Springs and Yakima tribe. Um, my dad was Yakima, my mother was Warm Springs. And I am praying that you will pass this. Thank you. We are in need of housing that we were promised 50 years ago. Thank you for coming. And I saw a, a, your picture with your great-grandfather. It's a beautiful, beautiful picture. Thank you. Yeah. I'm Ed Edmo. I'm enrolled in Shoshone Bannock, but I'm also next person Yakima. Been visiting on the river since I was six months old, so I'll be 61 next week. Long visit. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. I appreciate you all coming. Uh, are there any questions of these witnesses from the committee? Thank you very much. Really appreciate your coming. Uh, I had a statement. Oh, we, I'm we have sorry. To say. I, I thought you we were must, okay. Yeah. I thought you were just introducing. Yeah, us. they were introducing. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. go ahead and, and yeah. give a short statement. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Like I said, as as we currently try to um, figure out what what's going on with with how things are going to be done down there at Salilo, the Army Corps of Engineers and the BIA are hacking that out, of course. But um, you know, one of the things that, in being robbed of our lives and our livelihood down there as Salilo Indians, one of the things that we've had to do is adapt to survive. And our traditional ways have sustained us for thousands of years, socially, economically, and environmentally, in a society that gave us no value or gave our ways no value. So in, in having to sustain ourselves over all these years down there as Columbia River Indians, it's not been something that's been easy for any of us. Um, I myself am currently um, with the status of Slalo YM Indian because I am not affiliated with any of the three confederated tribes of the Yakima, Umatilla, Warm Springs, and the Nez Perce for who are currently um, in compact with the state to fish and, and exercise their rights down there. But because I'm Slalo YM, one of the things that that does to um, to me as an individual is is um, say that I have no place to be down here. Because Celilo to me represents the termination of a people. Celilo to me means that today you look at a picture, you see all these old black and whites and you wonder where all these people are. And without a question, you can follow them and track them back to either one of the three confederated, four confederated tribes. 
but as a Columbia River Indian who, who, who is not federally affiliated, you know, do I have the right to remain and preserve the original integrity of what our people were? Because today, as it stands, the U.S. government is telling me that as a Salila YM Indian, I have no place to return back home in this relocation plan. In, in that their proposal is to give me a home only if I relinquish my home ownership and my land ownership at Salilo at this time. And so with that, I find that very hard for me to swallow because we're not just the past. We are still here. A few new houses is great, great. It's heaps and bounds but social reform and the kinds of social reform that needs to take place for our people down along the Columbia River. The promise that was made to us when this Lila Falls was flooded was that it was in trade for these things. They, they took a dozen white doves. They gave the chief a peace pipe. They said from this day forward, we tell no lies. We will take care of your people until this day. There's no medical, there's no education, there's nobody heading up for housing down there. If they propose to put a few new houses down there for people who are living in poverty, how do they expect them to maintain it when the kinds of social reform issues are not being addressed down there that really need to be? So I'm asking the state and you good people to recognize that there's a greater issue at hand. And I thank you for bringing attention to this matter because it is greatly needed, but there's a much rounded picture to it all. And I just, ask you at this time to recognize that and I thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, would anybody else like to say anything? <laughs> thank you. Uh, my Indian name is Lamush. I'm named after my grandmother, Flora, which means little flower flowing against the river. But I'd like to say, you know, this commemoration is something that I'm very honored to have and recognize that some people have really have really recognized us as Native people and as owners of the falls which the Creator gave us for us to live. And they took something away that was not meant to be. They took our way of life, our traditional culture ways, and but we're still survivors to this day. And, <coughs> and this, like we talked about, this is 50 years of silence. There will be no more. And you know, our elders will very be sad if, if they even tried to bring it back. But memories is all we have, so but we have each other Appreciate as a people. That. Thank you. Thank you. I'm at Edmo. What I miss most is the mist. I'd stand on the east side of the Salila Falls on the spring shine day at sunset. There'd be a light west wind blowing mist on my cheek. What I miss most is the mist. I'm reading from a book of mine called These Three Words of Mine. There has been something. There has been some something. Sometimes it is a song. Sometimes a whisper. Sometimes it appears to be an animal. Other times, weeping, I hear it. There has been something that has disappeared from my mother earth. I'm not sure what it was. But sometimes at night, I can hear it in the wind or it comes to me in my dreams, like the smell of salmon cooking. Thank you for the support of uh, the non-Indian community. I'd like to welcome you to the 50th commemoration. Funding the Salilo this weekend, we're gonna have a uh, salmon feast, uh, canoe journey, uh, giveaways, washout service, and gambling. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not that. Thank you very much. Our next witness is Armand Minthorn from the Confederate Tribes of Umatilla. Welcome to the committee. Thank you. Again, my name is Armand Minthorn, member of the Confederated Tribes of Umatilla, uh, an elected official with our tribe. In my own language, I wish to briefly address about this memorial for Salilo Falls. We are the Nat Kiwatas, Ikuin Hiwas, 
Imakas Pikun Salailo. The men are called my chivas. Ki to token. Ikuin he was. Mitskuin achsa to token out. Not so. Ki wayam. Ki salailo. Imakas Pikun. Kun ko he was. Timipnisa. Ki to token out. O my he was the many makers and he won time. Ki walaset. When this world was created, it was a salmon that was created first. The salmon spoke a promise on how to take care of us as Indian people. We keep that promise today with our ceremonies, our songs, and our language. We cannot convey in words how much the loss of Salilo is to us. The ceremonies, the people that gathered there was wiped out by the federal government without our permission. It took away a way of life that was over 10,000 years old. From the very first man and woman that was created, they were given a responsibility how to take care of the fish because the fish spoke a promise on how to take care of us. To memorialize something so great and so sacred is a way that we can keep a memory. Emily Wahanaka is my mother-in-law. It's people like her that we need to continue to talk to about Salilo so that we can keep it in our hearts and in our mind, so that we can keep our language and our songs and our food going. The state of Oregon by this action to memorialize Salilo is only an acknowledgement. It cannot be conveyed enough how much Salilo meant to us. And the loss of Salilo is going to be felt for the rest of this life. The people that lived there, the way they lived, and now it's gone. But our people today will continue to hold sacred the salmon, will continue to hold our ceremonies to preserve our way of life, and we will work with the non-Indians. We have no choice. But what's important in this commemoration is the water that is important to all of us. Fish cannot live without water. And that water has to be clean. So today, I'm asking the state of Oregon to help protect the resources that are important to all of us. Not only so the Indian people can continue our way of life, but so you can continue your way of life. You can't live without water, and neither can I. And our future generations are dependent on the same resources that we live on today. And they need to remember. And in some manner, maybe they will memorialize something like we're doing with Salilo. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mintor. OK, I'm going to close the hearing on Senate Bill S Senate Joint Memorial 7 and SCR 10. And I'm going to open a work session on Senate Joint Memorial 7, Senator Walker. Oh, Madam Chair, I move Senate Joint Memorial 7 to the floor of the Senate with a due pass recommendation. Senator Walker has moved Senate Joint Memorial 7 to the Senate floor with a due pass recommendation. Is there any discussion, any objection? So ordered. Open a work session on SCR 10. 
Senator Walker. Madam Chair, I move SCR 10 to the floor of the Senate with a due pass recommendation. Senator Walker has moved SCR 10 to the Senate floor with a due pass recommendation. <coughs> Is there any discussion? Any objection? So ordered. Uh, Mr. Cruz, I assume Senator Gordley would like to carry these bills. Uh, we will assign these bills to Senator Gordley, who will be discussing them on the floor of the Senate, and I expect a favorable reception. I want to thank you all again for coming and sharing your personal history with us. Madam Chair, before Senator you close, Pazansky. I'd also like to thank everyone that came today. I know they traveled a long ways. It's very nice to hear the story from, the, from you as, to, as compared to just having it in writing. It means so much to hear it from the heart. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, I will now open a public hearing on Senate Bill 552, Council. We'll stand at ease for a moment while, uh, while uh, yeah, we'll stand at ease. 